We are taught so much garbage when it comes to sex, our bodies, how it should look, that most of the work I do with the women that I support is helping them unlearn the cultural messages that are not supporting them, their sex lives, their husband, their marriage. It's just, that's mostly what we do. So in this video, I'm just gonna have a lot of fun and I just wrote down 10 random myths, 10 random beliefs that you need to unlearn about sex in order for it to be really enjoyable. And uh, they're in no particular order. I just had a lot of fun with this and I'm allowing myself to rant a little bit in this video. So if you're looking for just a kind of a fun video that um, hopefully will help you a little bit see the toxic soup of culture that you're living in and how miseducated we all are about women's bodies and pleasure and sex, then this is for you. My name is Janet Denton House. I am a desire coach for women who are married to men. I am the creator of Wanting It More, which is a two month group coaching program for women who want to learn how to want and enjoy sex more authentically without pushing themselves, feeling guilty, or just doing it. So here we go. The first one, again, in no particular order is I should enjoy oral sex. No, you do not have to enjoy oral sex. I thought for years. All uh, sexy, confident, empowered women like oral sex. And so I bought books to help my husband learn how to do oral sex. And I just was so frustrated that I couldn't work and that there was something wrong with me. So anytime you feel like you should like a certain act, just remember, Jenna says that that will actually block you from your pleasure. Okay. I should like anything. No. I should love my husband's body, including his penis. Penises are weird looking. And while my husband and I and his penis are good friends, I don't love every inch of my husband's body. It isn't that he is so attractive and that's what pulls me in and makes the, me quiver with delight and desire. No, I cultivate my own pleasure. So you don't have to find your husband's body or his penis attractive at all. Number three, it should be spontaneous to be hot. Nope, not at all. Uh, you probably have responsive desire, which about 30% of the population has, which means that your desire is cultivated within a safe and comfortable environment. You aren't going to just be going along your business and just want some sex. Okay, so I'm sorry that the media and culture has totally misinformed you about how your body works. Scheduling sex is the best for so many women. Number four, we are responsible for each other's orgasms. You are responsible for your body and your husband is responsible for his body. If he gets an erection and gets aroused, you do not have to do anything about it. That is his body and same for you. Your body, your orgasm, your communication, your boundaries, your learning, your body, okay? Number five, sex is intercourse. Sex is not penis in vagina. Sex is about pleasure and connection and exploration of the senses and relaxation and nourishment. If there are any goals, including penetration, then your pleasure will go downhill, all right? Sex does not equal intercourse. Number six, genitals need to be involved. Yes, genitals, touching of genitals, oral pleasure with genitals, genitals touching each other, they do not have to be involved for a wonderful, delightful, pleasurable, connective experience with your partner, okay? Our minds are amazing, our breathing is amazing, our other senses are incredible. Give yourself the opportunity to explore outside of this narrowly defined cultural box that we have been put in. Number seven, vaginal orgasms are better. No, they're not. No, they're not. Who said? Lots of women enjoy clitoral stimulation and the enjoyable part of the organ is on the outside of the body. Yes, you can enjoy lots of fun exploration internally in the, in the vagina, but they aren't better. When I survey women again and again, I hear them say, I just want to learn how to have internal orgasms and move away 
from clitoral orgasms. And there is historical reasons for this, are clear, distinct messages that women were told around their sexuality. But asking a woman to have orgasms all the time with just uh, internal stimulation is like asking a guy to have orgasms with his testicles being rubbed. You see how that's absolutely ridiculous? Let's unlearn that crazy cultural message. Number seven, I shouldn't need lube. What do you mean, shouldn't need lube? Nobody like needs lube unless you have a medical condition. Lube is just delightful and it makes sense. And I'm not talking about the sticky, gross, chemical laden, laden like KY jelly that we may think from the drugstore. I'm talking about like nourishing, like oils or shea butter or something like yummy and organic and wonderful. I wouldn't ask you to rub any other sensitive part of your body without some sort of like slipperiness. You need slipperiness, but just a need, like it's a deficiency of yours. It's just like, why wouldn't you? Would you give somebody a massage without massage oil? Would you... Um, rub your eyeball without some sort of, don't rub your eyeball, but your eyeball needs some oils and waters and whatever goes on in the eyeball. It's a mucousy place and you need to have slippery, yummy, nourishing products. Okay? So it's not about needing it or not needing it or feeling like there's something wrong with you. I just think it's stupid not to have it. All right? Stupid not to have it. Number nine, we need to, did I miss this? I don't know. We're, I think we're on number nine. We need to increase excitement and arousal. And that's what we're taught about sex is that it has to be this, ah, uh, okay, I'm like super turned on, spontaneous. And now I just see him walk in the room, attracted to my husband's body. And then I just want to rip off his clothes. And then we go through a doorway. It's always a doorway. We land on the bed. We continue to rip each other's clothes off. We're having and puffing, we're sweating, there's frantic activity, and it's like, what can we use or or think of or do to get like more and more and more excitement and arousal? You don't have to do it that way. Sex can actually be more and more levels of relaxation and calmness and breathing and meditative. That's like the best sex. Well, not to put any labels on it, but for me personally, those are the best experiences I have. We're taught to go like this, increase it. And what I'm saying is we can unlearn that. It's actually about enjoyment and pleasure and connection. And a lot of times, especially for women, that's about relaxation. It's about self-care, about nourishment, about that true, genuine connection with ourselves and our partners. Oh, a last one. One more. I need to be sexy. I need to sound sexy, moaning well, dirty talk the way I think I should. I need to look sexy. My body needs to be in certain sexy positions and I need to be fit and thin and not pale. Um, I need to uh, wear sexy things. So I need to sound sexy, look sexy. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're just a human being with your thoughts and your, your body as it is. And um, whatever you were doing during the day, or if it's in the morning, whatever you were sleeping with or doing, you get to be you fully in the sexual experience with your worries and your concerns and your depressive thoughts and your um, quirks and your skin condition and everything that you're bringing in. You just get to be you. So you don't have to perform because it's about pleasure and connection. I hope that these 10 beliefs that I hope you can unlearn with me or start the process of learning or even just consider that these are possibilities that you could break free of it and expand your understanding what's possible for you in the sexual experience and what's possible for you, for your husband and your marriage. And yeah, I'm all about just uncovering the lies and looking towards the truth. I hope this video has been fun and educational and has expanded your thinking and I will see you in the next video.